Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. This week, let's talk about the mysterious black hole mass gap. Stars come in all sorts of masses. From our own star, which is very average, the sun only weighs one solar mass. But you also get very low mass stars, light stars like Bernard's star. That weighs a tenth of the mass of our sun. And very massive stars like Betelgeuse and Regal A, they come out at 11 and 21 solar masses, respectively. The mass of a star is what determines what it will end up as at the end of its life. A low mass star, those with less than eight times the mass of our sun in weight, will eventually expand out as a red giant star and then collapse down into a white dwarf, a low luminosity compact astronomical object. High mass stars are those with over eight solar masses. And these guys, depending on their mass, will eventually go supernova and become either a neutron star or a black hole. Because we know that masses of stars span the entire continuum of masses, we would expect that white dwarfs, neutron stars, and black holes also span the entire range of masses. But they don't. Astronomers looking at binaries of X-ray sources found that there's a mass gap. The highest mass neutron star is three solar masses, and the lowest mass black hole is five solar masses. So what kind of objects lie between this three and five solar mass gap, if any at all? And if this mass gap really exists, why is it that black holes can't form within this mass range? To help us understand this better, we can use gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are ripples in space and time, and one of the ways they're produced is when two bodies orbiting one another merge together. These ripples travel to us from far away, and by the time they reach us, their signals are usually very, very weak but gravitational wave detectors like LIGO and Virgo are so sensitive that they can detect mergers of black holes and neutron stars. These ripple patterns can then be used to determine the mass of the objects that originally merged together. This classification map tells us what kind of objects are merging together based on the calculation of their masses. There shouldn't be anything above the diagonal line because um, by definition, the mass of the first object is always larger than the mass of the second object. In the bottom left-hand corner, we find neutron star, neutron star mergers. In the top right corner, we have black hole, black hole mergers or black hole binary mergers, people call it. And in the bottom right corner, we have neutron star, black hole mergers. If the mass gap is real, then we shouldn't find anything in those mass gap regions. LIGO and Virgo give us the opportunity to get better constraints on the highest mass neutron star and the lowest mass black hole, and then to confirm whether or not this mass gap is really real. Since 2015, LIGO has had 31 confirmed detections of gravitational waves. Three of these have been binary neutron star mergers, and the rest of them binary black hole mergers. But then, recently, we found a new gravitational wave candidate, S190814BV. This source was likely to be a mass gap candidate, and originally, it had a 100% probability of lying in this mass range. But this calculation was based on point mass estimates. And later, when they took into account the probability distribution of the masses, they found that this merger was actually a black hole neutron star merger. This is still very exciting, though, for gravitational wave astronomers because it became the first neutron star black hole merger event that they observed with gravitational waves. Some astronomers believe that the mass gap could be arising due to differences in the mechanism producing neutron stars and black holes. In both cases, they're produced by core collapse supernova that are driven by the collapse of their progenitor star. 
But if there exists a gap in the energy that drives the supernova, then perhaps this could explain the mass gap. This could arise, for example, if there's differences in the growth rate of the instabilities during the core collapse phase. In any case, presence or even absence of a mass gap is very exciting for learning about the driving force, the engine behind supernova explosions. Nevertheless, this is inconclusive. More careful follow-up studies using X-ray binaries and also some alternative methods like microlensing have found no mass gap at all. Alternatively, the mass gap might just be a selection effect since X-ray binary sources with very low mass black holes are very difficult to determine masses for in which case LIGO should show up with some uh, low mass black hole in the mass gap range if they exist eventually in the future. Additionally, another mass gap exists in the higher mass range of black holes, between 60 and 120 solar masses, and it's also believed to be due to differences in the supernova mechanism. They call it the pair instability supernova, this kind of supernova occurs when the core collapse of the dying star releases gamma ray radiation and produces particle and antiparticle pairs. These pairs then form this thermonuclear explosion that completely annihilates the star, leaving nothing behind. These kind of explosions, these kind of supernova have been known about for decades but they've never been discovered. That is until very, very recently. Just last week, we observed the first ever pair instability supernova, SN 2016 IET. That was a lot of information. If you're interested in finding out a little bit more, I'm gonna put some extra reading material down below for you to go and check that out on your own. And in the meanwhile, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give me a like, share, and subscribe.